Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to our 62nd Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. Um, I've gotten some feedback, and it was, hey, where you been? We haven't seen a tutorial in a while. Well, make a long story short, I've been working. I'm a dad, so that takes up some time. Uh, my poor kitty, which you've heard in the background of some of my videos, has, has been rather sick. I've had to take him to the vet, and he needs a operation that's going to cost about six hundred dollars which of course does not make me happy but I love the little guy and I have been studying like mad for my certified ethical hacker exam which is right around the corner so that's where I've been now without further ado go ahead and just create a simple uh, simple uh, console application as you can see we've just got our little bare bones app let's just compile and run this just to show you there's no hidden voodoo magic going on here um, had quite a few people contact me and say, Brian, love your videos, but we did not really understand signals and slots. Could you go over those a little bit more? So we're going to go over those. If you know signals and slots inside and out, please feel free to skip this video. Um, otherwise, let's do it. We're just going to add new, and we're going to add a class. And let's just call this person. And we are going to say Q object is the base class and finish. Now we're going to keep this person class fairly simple. We want to include and we're going to say Q string and we want to include Q debug. And that's a lot, that just allows us to print things out here. Now you see our class is very, very basic. It inherits Q object and it has this Q object macro. What do these do? Well, we inherit Q object, that way it has all the fundamentals of Q object. And Q object macro allows it to work with the mock or the meta object compiler. Now, admittedly, I might have the two flipped around, and if I do, I'm sure I'm gonna get many, many, many messages saying, hey, you're wrong. I welcome those messages. Now, what is mock? You've heard me mention that once before. MOC, mock, stands for Meta Object Compiler. What it does is it takes your signals and slots, which we'll be creating here in a second, and connects them. It generates the code that makes all this stuff work. So there's a lot of code in the background that gets generated that you never have to touch, you never have to see, because mock creates it and does all the magic for you. Pretty neat, huh? So, we're going to make a signal. We're going to say void speak Q string, and we're just going to say words. And now we need a slot. So we'll say void, probably something my girlfriend wishes I'd do more often, listen, Q string, and words. So there's our signals and slots. Now, a signal is something that happens. We emit a signal, meaning we tell the world, hey, this happened. A slot, on the other hand, is when something happens. We want to consume that event, meaning the world is going to tell us, hey, something happened, and we're going to process that. That being said, one of these we have to implement, and one of them we don't. Well, if you guessed we have to implement a signal, I'm sorry, you're wrong. We don't need to implement a signal because mock takes care of all that for us. We do have to implement the slot because something happened and we need to process it. So let's just go ahead and really silly example I know, but we're just going to create a little gossip here. So we're going to say void person and we're going to say listen. And we're just going to queue debug and we're just going to say Someone told me, dot, 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 and we're just going to say words. Oops. There we go. So when they listen, they're just going to turn right around and say, well, someone told me, and they're just going to repeat the same thing they just heard. That's pretty typical of people, I think. I'm just kidding. All right. So, what we probably need to do next is give it a little more information here. 
because we want to get some sort of dialogue going at a water cooler. So let's just say Q string, and we'll say name. Now I'm foregoing the use of getters and setters. Um, we've discussed those in previous tutorials, and we're just going to throw the raw variable out there. Um, ideally, that's not unique, but I'm just going to try and save time and focus on signals and slots here. So we're going to say name, and we're going to uh, just give it a function. We'll say void, and we'll call it gossip. Qstring words. And let's just save our work. And now we need to implement this. So let's go in here and go void person gossip. And we're just going to little copy and paste magic here. And let's just actually put the name out here while I'm thinking about it. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, so bear with me here. Name. says. So it's just going to print out the name someone told me. And for gossip, we're just going to say name. Name says. So very simple. Let's review. We've got our person class, which is a Q object, has the Q object macro. It has a name. It has a function called gossip, it has a signal called speak, and a slot called listen. Now, notice we haven't done anything with signals and slots yet. What we need to do here is gossip. So we're going to actually emit that signal. And we're going to speak. Oops. There we go. And we want to speak words. So we're going to say words. There we go. Now, when you emit the signal, you're telling the world, hey, this happened. And anybody who's connected to that is going to automatically get it. And I'm going to demonstrate that next. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a water cooler class. I know the typical water cooler at work where everybody talks. So we'll say water cooler. We're just going to give it a Q object. Next, finish. All right. Now, we're going to pretty much just leave this blank. And what we're going to do is just right in the constructor of this guy, we're going to start gossiping, but we need to include some stuff first. So say include. Help if I spelled include right. So we're going to include our person class. And we're just going to say person. And we'll say Mary. Actually, not Mary. Let's say Kathy. We got our chatty Kathy here. And then we'll say person. And we'll say Bob. Boy, I really need to start wearing my glasses again if I just spell babe. Anyways. So what we got is we got Kathy and Bob standing around the water cooler here. And we need to connect these two because Bob's listening to Kathy. So what we're going to do is say connect. And this is how you connect two objects together. You have a sender and a receiver, and the sender comes first. So we're going to say Kathy is the sender. And the signal, and you actually have to say signal, hmm. it's not liking me today for some reason. Hmm. Bear with me one moment. Okay, I see what I did wrong here. We are actually supposed to use a pointer. Sorry about that. It's been a very, very long day at work. See slide one of this tutorial. So we're going to give it a reference to Kathy. And then we have to actually say signal. And then the signal that we're going to use, which is speak. So we're going to say do something. And then we have to connect it to the receiver, which is Bob. Poor Bob has to listen to Kathy chat all day long. And then we have the slot. And the slot is, of course, listen. Let's go to the end here so you can see this whole thing. I apologize for the screen real estate here. Let's actually hide the sidebar. 
So we've got our water cooler, and we got Kathy, and we got Bob. And we're just going to connect these two together. And you're going to say Kathy is going to speak, Bob is going to listen. That's just very simply how you connect these two together. Now notice nothing's happened yet. We still haven't done anything. So we're going to say Kathy, gossip. And we're going to say, hmm, I heard Mark is bald. I don't know. I'm not a gossip queen, so I'm having a really hard time coming up with gossip here. Um, I'm guessing that's what a chatty Kathy would actually gossip about. So let's just save and run. Let's just see if this whole monstrosity even compiles here. And sure enough, it compiles. But we, of course, have forgot to do anything. So <laughs> apologize. Include. And we'll say water cooler. Actually, we want to do the single quotes. Now, if I've never discussed why you use a bracket or why you use a single, why you use the double quotes, it's because if you're using a bracket, it means you're using a library, and if you're using quotes, that means you're using one of your files. Let's say water cooler, and a cooler, and there's our constructor there. So when we fire up this water cooler, a bunch of stuff's going to happen. Let's compile and run this, and. Blank says, I heard Mark was bald. Blank said, someone told me I heard Mark was bald. Well, yes, we forgot to enter the names. Let's fix that up real quick here. Like I said, I apologize. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Let's fix this up here, and then we'll discuss it. Name equal Kathy. And we could have very well done this in the constructor, but I want to make this very simple. We'll call this Chatty Kathy. And then Bob, we'll say Bob.name equal, we'll say poor Bob. All right. Save, run. Let's see this thing work. All right, there we go. Chatty Kathy says, I heard Mark is bald. Poor Bob says, someone told me I heard Mark is bald. Um, we do have a Kathy where I work, but she's not a Chatty Cathy or a Gossip Queen, and I don't think we have a Bob or a Mark where I work. So, this is all speculation. Nobody get upset. Let's just kind of dive back into this. We're going to go right from the beginning. When the program starts, it's calling Water Cooler, making a new instance of Water Cooler. Now, when Water Cooler is created, we're creating an instance of Kathy and an instance of Bob. Now, I should step back and say we're actually creating two instances of Person. This is the same class, using it two different ways. Now we're setting Kathy.name equal Chatty Kathy, Bob.name equal Poor Bob, and then we're calling Connect. Connect is how you connect two objects together to allow them to use signals and slots. Now, if you try to use that in the main, because main is not a Q object, you will get an error message, because main is just C++ code. It knows nothing of the meta object compiler or signals or slots or anything like that. That's why I created the water cooler class. Chatty Cathy says, I heard Mark is bald. Now, because we've connected these signals and slots, the signal being speak, which is called during gossip, Bob, listen, Bob's going to consume that signal. So when when Kathy emits the speak signal, any class connected is going to also receive that. And let's just do that. And let's just say uh, Sally. And a little copy and paste magic here because I'm running short on time. And we'll say Silly Sally. Now, let's run this, and I'll show you that. Notice how Sally's not in the picture here, because we haven't connected her. Let's just simply copy this. You notice how you can just switch out the, the instance name there? Compile and run. 
And we now have three people at the water cooler. Chatty Cathy says, I heard Mark was bald. Poor Bob says, someone told me, blah, blah, blah. Silly Sally, same thing. So you can see how our instances are connected. So that one signal is emitted and multiple slots are consuming it. That's how signals and slots work. It's a very powerful mechanism. And there are other libraries and frameworks out there that do that, but uh, Qt actually does it very, very well. I'm very impressed with the way Qt does it. All right, now let's kind of jump into the nuts and bolts of the person class here. You have got the, um, the gossip function, and you have got the speak signal, and the listen slot. The gossip function lives solely to emit the speak signal. Now, in a real-world application, you would just pretty much say, hey, do this. Now, you might be asking, why didn't we do this in the water cooler class? Why didn't we just go in here and say, Kathy, actually, let's just say, emit, Kathy, speak. I mean, doesn't this seem like it would be an easier thing to do? Well, if you try to run that, you're going to be disappointed because it's going to say, eh, it's protected. It's part of that class. You can't modify it outside the class. You can't even call it. Now, I'm sure there's workarounds out there. But um, you should uh, not let other objects emit on your behalf. Meaning you don't want to let somebody speak for Kathy. Kathy wants to speak for herself. That's why you have gossip. When I say gossip, I actually mean, sorry, our function. Which, when you look at the function, exists pretty much solely to emit the signal. Because it's protected, we can call it from inside our instance. But other instances not, cannot call it for us. Basically, a very simple way of saying, hey, nobody else can speak or emit or signal on our behalf. All right, now our listen function is also a slot. That's right, I said our listen function is also a slot. Slots are functions, functions are slots. They're the same thing. The only difference is you have put the function prototype under the slots. That way, the meta object compiler, the mock, knows that that function can be connected to a signal. Very simple, very easy. So, uh, this is Brian. I thank you for watching and listening to me rant about my, my work and my parenthood and my poor kitty. And uh, keep the feedback coming. I like hearing from you guys.